Hey guys, Pastor Jurgen here. I'm so glad you're tuning into one of our powerful messages that is guaranteed to absolutely elevate your life to another level. At Awaken, we only want to preach fresh, real, powerful to help you grow stronger in your walk with God, develop your faith so you can take more territory. I'm praying that God blesses you and enriches your soul as you listen to this amazing word from God. God bless you. Psalm 37, I think it's verse 3, Psalm 37, 3, says, Dwell in the land and feed on His faithfulness. It doesn't say dwell in the land and try and produce. It says dwell in the land and feed. Are you saying that you don't want us to be faithful? Oh, no, I want you to be faithful. I'm just trying to tell you how to do it. Your sinful nature cannot produce faithfulness. If you talk to, if you talk to any person involved in uh, fitness, in vitamins, in health, they will tell you that you are what you eat. First thing they'll ask you, tell me about your diet. You are what you eat. The Bible says, dwell in the land and feed on His faithfulness. When you begin to feed on the faithfulness of God, you begin to produce the faithfulness of God. Lift your hands high to heaven. Father, I declare January, January 2024. This is a year of breakthrough. This is a year of unlocking heaven. This is a year of, of jettisoning earthly food and earthly man for heavenly manner. We declare the food of heaven coming. We declare an impartation. We declare breakthrough in Jesus' name. Everybody say amen. amen. Go ahead. Give two or three people a high five. Tell them they are really, really ridiculously good looking. Tell the person on the other side, you're almost as good looking as Pastor Samuel Duth. Modeling his Rowan gear. I said to Samuel, I said, Samuel, like, man, you, you're wearing the same as up there on the, on, the, on the screen. He's like, yeah, duh. He says, when you look that good, that's what he said to me. I said, I don't understand what you even mean by that. He says, Pastor, you don't mess with perfection. <laughs> so I just, I mean, can you believe he said that, Marco? I can't believe he said that. Oh, I love Pastor Samuel and beautiful Pastor Katie. How many people know that Katie gets, Katie gets a very, very special crown when she gets to heaven? <laughs> oh, my gosh. I just love it. I just love being back here. Look at look how, how wonderful the Sullivans look in your flannel shirts and your blue jeans and your hip. I tell you what, for 32-year-olds, you guys look amazing. Hey, come on. I love it. And then Dr. Madam Michaela Hubbard. I mean, just, I don't know if there are two greater leaders on the planet. They are transparent. They are fun. And how many people are grateful that Pastor Michaela did a four-year degree at SDSU in communication? And then when she got married to Dr. Matt, it just went out the window. I had a son at the 9 a.m. service. I had a son at the 11 a.m. service on Sunday. They both came home saying, Dad, oh, church, you missed out. I'm like, well, I had to preach at El Cajon. Yeah, but you should have been there. I'm like, I couldn't. I had to preach at El Cajon. They're like, Pastor McKay. And both of them told me that story and started to laugh. Oh, I just love it. How many people know it's good to laugh in church? Come on. All right, come with me in your Bibles because I, I want to try and jump into this tonight because I want to pray for some people. I feel, I feel the, the beginning. I already feel the rumblings. I, I've already got the word. I already got a word for um, conference. For, and conference is going to be impartation, nights of fire. I'm telling you that because you, you, you are a spirit, you have a soul, and you live in a body, God communicates spirit to spirit. The, the, the edu education system goes straight to the mind. There are a lot of things that Jesus did that didn't make sense. It, I, I, hang on, I don't understand. There was a little boy, five loaves and two fish. H how are they? And everybody ate and was satisfied. And then he told the disciples to go and collect the basketfuls of leftovers, which we didn't, we didn't think that was going to be enough. But now we're going out collecting leftovers and they filled 12 bar. It just doesn't, it doesn't make sense. How can, how can a man walk on water? Just the law of physics says that, 
a, a solid can't stand on a liquid. The liquid has to, but how can Jesus, and, and I need you to understand, don't reduce your life down to just the cognitive. Leave that for the, the world. Let the world tell you what's impossible. When we got to San Diego, the, 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 they tried to tell me all the things that were impossible. I'm like, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Slow down. I'm trying to write them all down. I'm trying to write them all down. Because the Bible says with men, it is impossible, but not with God. With God, all things are possible. I said, while you keep looking to the hand of man, knock yourself out. It'll keep being impossible. And while you can prove that it's impossible, I'll be over here with God, having you scratch your heads going, hang on, hang on, how could that be possible? How, how can that live in, live in the impossible network this year? Come on, how many people are ready to just let go of impossible and start stepping into all things are possible? Come on. All right, this year. All right, come with me, come with me. The title of my message tonight is Breakthrough Keys for 2020 More. Breakthrough Keys for 2020 More. So 1 Samuel chapter 1 goes like this. It says, now there was a certain man of Ramathaim Zophim distant cousin of mine, of the mountains of Ephraim, and his name was Elkanah, the son of Jer Jeroham, the son of Elihu, the son of Tohu, who invented tofu, possibly, the son of Zuf and Ephraimite. And he had two wives, greedy. No, actually, that's not greedy. I just, oh, dear Jesus. Oh, my Lord. I know my wife. If I even suggested both eyes would be swollen shut and my gender would be changed. <laughs> Dear God. So let's, let's just go there and just pretend he's a brave man. He had, he had two wives. There's a fine line between bravery and stupidity. Let me just tell you that. All right. Anyway, it's in the Bible, so let's just keep reading, okay? Don't get me stuck there. The name of one was Hannah, and the name of the other was Penina. Penina had children, but Hannah had no children. This man went up from his city yearly to worship and sacrifice to the Lord of hosts in Shiloh. And the two sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas, the priests of the Lord, were there. Whenever the time came for Elkanah to make an offering, he would give portions to Penina and his wife and to all her sons and daughters, but to Hannah... He would give a double portion, for he loved Hannah, although the Lord had closed her womb. And her rival, Penina, provoked her, also provoked her severely to make her miserable because the Lord had closed her womb. So it was year by year when she went up to the house of the Lord that Penina would provoke Hannah, that she provoked her, Therefore she wept and would not eat. Then Elkanah, her husband, said to her, Hannah, why do you weep? Why do you not eat? And why is your heart grieved? Am I not better to you than ten sons? I was talking with Pastor Katie, and she said, that's the Bible verse that Samuel put in, in the Valentine's card from last year. <laughs> Oh, I couldn't resist. But he just rolls with it so well, Marky Cullen, doesn't he? He just rolls with it. He's so good. Oh, okay. Listen, guys, if you want a, uh, want a night on the sofa this Valentine's, that's the verse to put in your Valentine's card. Dear Jesus, the guy. All right, now he's gone from brave to stupid. All right, so forgive me. All right, verse 9. So Hannah rose early after they'd finished eating and drinking in Shiloh. Eli the priest was sitting on the seat by the doorpost of the tabernacle of the Lord. And she was in bitterness of soul and prayed to the Lord and wept in anguish. Then she made a vow and said, Lord of hosts, O Lord of hosts, if you will indeed look on the affliction of your maidservant and remember me and not forget your maidservant, but will give your, male ser your maidservant a male child, 
then I will give him to the Lord all the days of his life. No razor shall come upon his hand. And it happened as she continued praying before the Lord that Eli watched her mouth. Now Hannah spoke in her heart. Only her lips moved, but her voice was not heard. Therefore Eli just presumed, he just assumed, he thought she was drunk. So Eli said to her, how long will you be drunk? Put your wine away from you. But Hannah answered and said, no, my Lord, I'm a woman of sorrowful spirit. I'm, I've neither drunk wine nor intoxicating drink, but have poured out my soul before the Lord. Do not consider your maidservant a wicked woman, for out of the abundance of my complaint, everyone say complaint, and grief I have spoken until now. Then Eli answered and said, go in peace, and the God of Israel grant your petition which you have asked of him. And she said, let your maidservant find favor in your sight. So the woman went away and ate. Her face was no longer sad. Verse 19, then they rose early in the morning and worshiped before the Lord and returned and came to their house at Ramah. And Elkanah knew Hannah, his wife, and the Lord remembered her. So it came to pass in the process of time that Hannah conceived and bore a son. And she called his name Samuel. What a great name. She called his name Shmuel, saying, because I have asked him from the Lord. Now, I want you to come down to verse 24. It says, when she had weaned him, she took him up with her with three bulls and one ephah of flour and a skin of wine and brought him to the house of the Lord in Shiloh, and the child was young. Then they slaughtered the bull, and they brought the child to Eli. And she said, oh, my Lord, as your soul lives... My Lord, I am the woman who stood by here a few years ago praying to the Lord. This child is what I prayed for, and the Lord has granted my petition, which I asked of him. Therefore, I have also lent him to the Lord. As long as he lives, he shall be lent to the Lord. So they worship the Lord there. Amen. Amen. All right. Let me give you four quick keys that I want you to, to, to take away with you tonight to apply this year. The first thing, the first thing that we see with, with Hannah is that she was living with a comparison deficit. She was living with a comparison deficit. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 10 verse 12 that we are not wise when we compare ourselves one to another. So the first thing I want you to, to understand is you don't have to live in a comparison. It, it's so easy to, to want to compare ourselves to somebody else in their journey, in their blessing. I found that, that, that it's actually not a great thing. It never helps me because if, if I compare myself to somebody, I, I remember, I remember um, you know, when I first got saved, we would hear this all the time. People say, well, you know, you just got to remember there's always somebody worse off than you. There's all, you know, which, you know, and, and you, there were Christians who are like, yeah, yeah, I guess so. There's people worse off than me. So Elijah is by a brook, and the brook dries up. And, and God says, arise, Elijah, go to Zarephath. See, I've commanded a widow there to provide for you. So Arisa go gets up, and he goes to Zarephath, and there's a widow gathering sticks. And he calls out to the widow and says, hey, can you get me some water? And it's a famine. And she says, oh, all right. Then she goes to get water and he goes, oh, this must be the widow. God said, there'll be a widow who's going to provide for you. I just happened to turn up to the city, no coincidences. And I look and here's a widow. She's just lost her husband. She knows where water is in a drought. This must be the one. He says, oh, and would you bake me a little cake? Because I'm feeling a little bit peckish, haven't eaten since breakfast. And then she just stops. And she turns around and she says, as the Lord your God lives, I don't have a little cake for you to eat. I've got just enough oil and just enough flour for me and my son to have one last meal and then we'll die. You know what Elijah didn't do? Go, wow, you actually make me feel good. <laughs> I had no idea there was someone worse off than me. The Bible says that the, the brook Cherith dried up. So he lost, he lost a source of provision. She lost her husband. She lost her source of provision. But that's not all she lost. She lost her companion. She lost the father of her baby. 
She lost her soulmate. She lost her helpmate. She lost her life partner. Nowhere in the Bible does it tell you to have the disposition, well, there's always somebody worse off than you. That, the Bible calls that foolishness. Don't you ever live there? If, if, if I look at someone and say, well, oh, look at them, such a loo-. pride comes into my heart. If I look at somebody who's a little further along and they, they're a little bit better than me, envy can come into my heart. None of those things are good. It, 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 this woman here is, is broken. She, because, see, her, 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 the estrogen and her, her DNA confirm her gender, confirm that she's a woman. She's a woman with a womb, but something is broken in her womb. She's watching her rival. She's watching Peninnah. Ha- Hannah is the one that is loved. Elkanah loves Hannah, but when he saw that she was unable to produce children, he said, ah, I love you, but I also, there's no social security, there's no social welfare. He says, I I don't want to grow old and have nobody to to take care of me, so I'm going to take on a second wife. She'll produce the babies, but, you know, I can keep loving you. That's That was his rationale and mindset. But there's conflict because uh, Peninnah has what, Hannah doesn't have, and Hannah has something that Peninnah doesn't have. Hannah has her husband's affection and devotion, whereas Peninnah has babies. It is a conflict. Nobody is winning in the game of comparison. And and all this has done is made her inferior, insecure, incomplete, and inadequate. So she lives with a comparison deficit. This year, I want you to understand, that you don't have to look at and measure yourself against what other people have or don't have. Don't do that. This year, what I want you to do is is lift your eyes a little bit higher and look at what God has said you can have. Have a look at what God has said you can have. I I, I love, you know, there's a a kind of a, a stanza and a lot of churches do it. You know, they say, come on, lift up your Bible. Say, this is my Bible. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. And, and it's, it's, I know it's been a little, bit, it's a little bit cheesy, but it's true. The Bible says that in Christ, all the promises of God are yes and amen. You don't need to look to your left and you don't need to look to your right. You don't need to live in envy. You don't need to live in pride. You don't need to live in... So this year, make a decision. I'm going to get out of the comparison deficit. Number two, number two, trying to move a little quicker. Number two, her complaint became her cause. Her complaint became her cause. I I used to, you know, when you have kids, I mean, dear goodness gracious. The the complaining. Oh my Lord. How long are you? How come I have to why do I have to wear pants? Look, it's just dear Jesus. I can't tell you how many times we're on vacation. I thought it was a brilliant idea. We're going to go on vacation. We're going to save money. The money we would spend on airfares, we'll just drive. It's eight hours, but we'll drive. And the money we'll save, we'll put into like dinners and restaurants. And oh my God, those eight hours. Those eight hours. I don't know how many times. I want, I mean, oh dear God, I wanted to stop the car. We had four children in the car. I would have been happy to arrive with two. (laughs) Like, dear goodness gracious. Oh, my Lord. So I was always kind of like against complaining. And then I'm reading about Gideon. And Gideon's threshing wheat in a wine press. And an angel appears to Gideon and says, Gideon, you mighty man of valor. Gideon's like, I'm hiding in a wine press like a wuss. <laughs> Threshing wheat in a wine press, dysfunctional, trying to make just enough for me. And you're calling me a mighty. Heaven just sees you different. We see ourselves by our limitations. God sees you by your potential. We see ourselves through the lens of our limitations. God sees you through your potential. So then the angel (laughs) says to Gideon, the Lord is with you, you mighty man of valor. 
And Gideon says, stop, stop right there. If the Lord is with us, then why is all this happening? Where are his miracles, which our fathers told us about, saying, did not the Lord bring us up out of Egypt? Oh, no, no, the Lord has forsaken us and delivered us from the hand of the Midianites. And then the Bible says, and the angel turned to him and said, which means that while he was speaking, the angel just kind of lost interest for a moment. And he's like, yeah, the Lord has forsaken us. And the angel's like, and then the angel turns and says go in this might of yours and you'll save Israel from the hand of Midian have I not sent you and I would read that going God do the angels also have ADD how can how can the angels say go in this might of yours and God said everyone's cowering everyone's hiding Thank God there's one person complaining that it just ain't right. It just ain't right. He's saying, where is the God of my fathers? Where are his miracles? Where are his promises? Nothing is going to shift until you take the deficit that, is, that, that you see with other people, and instead you take that deficit to what God has promised, what God has said, what God has declared, what God has spoken, and then you turn that complaint into your cause. I'm telling you, this year, get to men's prayer, get to women's prayer, get to cherish, get to emerge, get to nights of fire, because I'm telling you, what God is going to do, He is sometimes waiting for somebody to, to have a complaint. How long are you going to put up with just hope? How long are you going to put up with mediocre? How long are you going to put up with broke? How long are you going to put up with struggle? How long are you going to put up with lack? How long are you going to put up with barren? Hannah got to the point where she's like, you know what? God has closed my womb, but the same God who closed it is the same God who opened it. Her complaint became her cause. Nothing changes, nothing changes until you allow a complaint to become your cause. When we came to San Diego, People tried to give me counsel. They tried to give me advice. They're like, hey, when you come to San Diego, yeah, this Holy Spirit stuff, this Shabbat Reka, speaking in tongues, whatever you do, don't do that. And my con, whatever you do, don't do deliverance. And don't do Holy Spirit. And they told me, they gave me a list of all the things not to do. And I'm, I'm so you're telling me that I should just give San Diego more of what it's already got. I don't understand why God would send us from Sydney all the way to San Diego to just give them what they've already got. I feel that God sent us here because when I was praying for a, a, a child in the hospital, the, 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 the hopelessness in the parents, and they tried to tell me it was God's will that this little, little two-year-old fell into a pond and drowned. They tried to tell me this was God's will and that God's get, God gets glory. That God gets glory from it. That's what they were telling me in the hospital. And I'm like, you, 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 you do read your Bible, right? God raises the dead. You do read your Bible that there's good and evil in the world. Do, 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 your theology, your theology is that God was in heaven feeling a little glory deprived. So he, a little two-year-old into a pond to drown. And then, oh, Gabriel, my glory tank is getting filled. People believe this rubbish. People believe that. And I'm in the hospital and I'm just grieved because I could feel the anointing. I could feel the power of God and they would not let me pray for the baby. They would not let me pray for the child. Pastor Mark Peterson and and John Heinrichs and Dr. Matt prayed for a, a child just not even a year earlier who was on life support and they wanted to switch it off and the kid walked out of the hospital. Same hospital, same ward. Almost the same bed. But these people, because of their theology, and it put a complaint in me. I, f- I felt God say, well, you carry the burden. San Diego doesn't have it, but it needs a church that believes that with God all things are possible. It's a church that embraces the Holy Spirit. It's a church that believes in the power of God. It's a church that doesn't have prayer requests. It has a book of miracles. It's a church that when it hears that somebody has cancer, it doesn't say, oh, well, our condolences. 
you know, let's, let's support the local hospice. And I'm not saying that we don't support the local hospice, but I'm saying let's avoid the hospice altogether. Let's believe for the power of God. My God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He still heals. He still delivers. He still raises the dead. But it's got to begin with a complaint. The third thing, the third thing that I love about Hannah is she knew that breakthrough was in the house of God. She knew the breakthrough was in the house of God. The Bible says that the Lord had closed her womb. And the Bible says that her, her rival, Penina, provoked her because the Lord had closed her womb. How many people would have run from God? How many people would have said, yeah, what kind of a God closes the womb of somebody? All I want is a baby. She could have run from God. She could have run from God and told her story and Oprah would have interviewed her. I mean, The View would have loved it. They talk about what a meanie God is. She, 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 she could have got a book endorsement on how mean and cruel God is. Should you really trust him? She wouldn't have had a baby. She wouldn't have got a miracle. She could have ran from God. But I love Hannah because... She's like, huh, the Lord's closed my womb. He's not telling me why. But why would I run from the God who opens and no man can shut and shuts and no man can open? Why would I, why would I run from him when I can run to him? He holds the keys that lock and unlock. Why would I go to somebody else when he has the keys? So she runs to the house of God. This year, I'm telling you, make a decision that, that in 2020 more, what I'm going to do more of is I'm going to spend more time in prayer. I'm going to spend more time in the Word. Download the, the one-year Bible app. Spend more time. Make a decision. You know what? We're, we're going to emerge this year, and I'm going to bring this person and that person. We're going to go to Cherish. We're going to go to Marriage Retreat. Just this year, go, go next level. Go, go, go up one level in your devote and watch what God unlocks. Don't run from God. Run to God. Don't run from the house of God. She goes to the house of God. And let me just say this. Let me just say this. What freaks me out about this story is if you do a deep dive, Eli is backslidden. Eli's completely backslidden. And yet, and yet, he says, the Lord grant your request. And the anointing comes and she has a baby. And I'm like, God, I just, I don't understand it. He's, he's not worshiping, he's backslidden. And God says, yeah, because you think I only anoint the people. He says, Eli is the priest and the prophet. The gifts of God and the calling of God are without repentance, are irrevocable. God anoints the office. It takes pressure off me because there are some days where just life, just life. Life is busy. Life is crazy. Life is chaos. My, my, my wife's dog died two weeks ago. I bought him for her eight years ago on her birthday. And it, 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 was, it was for three nights. She would, I, would, I would be awoken with her just weeping. And I would just hold her. And my, my jammy pants, shirt was all wet. And it was, and, and then I'd have to, you know, and then we had people over and we had people coming and it was transition. And, and I remember driving to church going, oh God, I just feel like I just, I've been so busy trying to comfort my wife. I, I don't have a message. And I'm like, how can, you know, then, you know, the devil gets in your head. I'm like, you know, like guilt, condemnation, like, oh my. And the Holy Spirit says, yeah, jerks, I haven't just anointed you for when you're in season. Paul wrote to Timothy and says, be ready in season and out of season. He says, I'm going to be there. I, I'm beside you. I'm with you. I'll whisper to you. If I was honest, it was probably the best sermon I've ever preached. I'm like, I'm going to do that more often. He's like, don't you dare, you little rascal. You get in and hit the books and study. I'm like, okay, yes, Lord. Eli, Eli is not even walking real tight with God, but there's an anointing. There's an anointing. And I say all of that to say this, that, that Eli was sitting at the doorpost to the entrance of the house of God. She's in there pouring out her heart to God. And then he releases a word and everything changed in her womb. Everything shifted. One word from Mike Maiden. One word from Rex Crane. One word 
from Bill Johnson, one word from Lance Wallnow, one word from Dr. Matt, one word from Michaela. What I am telling you, I am telling you, God's anointing, it's not the vessel. Sometimes we look at the vessel. Sometimes we judge the vessel. It's, it's what the vessel carries. It's what God has anointed. It's what God has appointed. One word can change everything. One word released everything. The fourth point, the last point, she gave into her breakthrough. She gave into her breakthrough. She was the original, original vision builder because she made a vow in secret. There was no one else around. She, she made a vow to God. She says, God, if you will give me a male child, I will give him, I will lend him to the Lord all the days of his life and no razor shall come upon his head. And then all of a sudden she's praying. Do you know how many people will say, you know, Lord, Lord, oh my gosh, I just need a parking spot. It's Christmas shopping and there's cars everywhere. Lord, I promise if you get me a parking spot right now, I'm not going to cast. I'm going to give up the cigarettes and I'm going to stop eating junk. Oh, hang on. That's all right, forget it. There's one. And they pull in. It's amazing how many people. Eli, three, four, five years later, because it says when she'd, when she'd weaned him, so he's maybe three, four or five, she brings him with bulls, with flour, with a skin of wine, and Eli's like, what, what, what are you doing? And she says, well, a few years ago, I was here. And you thought I was drunk. And you said, the Lord grant God heard your words. And I conceived and I made a vow to God. And I'm bringing my only son. I'm going to give my only begotten son. Heard that somewhere before. I'm going to give my only begotten son to the house of the Lord. She fulfilled her vow. She fulfilled her vow. There's something powerful about fulfilling your vows. How easy would it have been for her? Nobody heard it. God understands. It's my only son. But if you read the next chapter, which we don't have time to tonight, but I want to encourage you. If you read the next chapter, she leaves the house of God singing. She leaves the house of God singing. And as she sings, out of her mouth comes this this song, this lyric, she says, she who was barren has bore seven. Well, hang on, hang on. Whoa, 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 whoa. You've only got one. It might have been a fluke. It might have been the alignment of the planets in the solar system. There was just enough. She's like, no, no, no. God's opened my womb. And I gave to the Lord. I gave to the Lord. Because I gave to the Lord, I know that God is no debtor. He's no debtor to men. If I gave to the Lord, it's coming back. So I can prophesy seven. Now let me just say this. There's a lot of people that have a problem with, they say, you know, at Awaken Church, they teach that, you, that when you give, that you get. That when you give, you get. And they, 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 get, on, they get on their horse. They're a high horse and they feel... They feel, they feel like, look at me and my high horse. Yes, we're not like those awakened people. Thank you, Samuel. Is this all right? We're not like those awakened people. <laughs> Samuel, what are you doing, you rascal? <laughs> Sons of Scotland. You've come to fight us free. Now, anyway, so what, watch it. So can I, just, can, I just, can I just put that to rest? Can I just put that to rest? It wasn't our original idea. It was Jesus. Jesus said, give and it will be given to you. Press down, shaking together. Right. Hang on here. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah, that's the problem we have with Awakened Church. You teach people to give to get. Uh, like that's their motivation. Their motivation is they give to get. It shouldn't be your motivation. All right, I hear you, but let's have a look at the Bible. Captain High Horse. The Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Why, why, why would he do that? Like, can you imagine the angels in heaven going, Lord, isn't, 
Isn't that your only son? Yes. They're about to crucify him. Yes. Why would you give your only son? I'm not expecting anything in return. God knew if he gave his very, very best that he would reap the greatest harvest. There are almost 2.8 billion Christians on the planet today. God sowed a seed 2,000 years ago and every day, born again, born again, born again, born again, born again. When you give, whenever you give, yes, it leaves your hand, but it never leaves your life. If you follow the story, which we encourage, the Bible says, and Samuel would return every year to his mama. And every year on his birthday, he would go home to mama and mama would make him a new ephod because he outgrew the, the, the last one. She'd make him a new ephod and they'd spend a week together and then she'd bring him back up to the house of God all the days of his life. There was this beautiful connection. She, she gave him, but he never left her. When you give, it doesn't leave your life. It leaves your hand, but it goes into your future where it multiplies and it comes back. The Bible says that, goes on to say that she had six sons. She might have had daughters as well, but she had six sons. She who was barren, she ended up singing. She ended up with breakthrough. This year is a year of your breakthrough. This year is a year of your breakthrough. Don't live in a comparison deficit of what other people have and don't have. Let the Word of God, let the promises of God, hold the promises of God up and say, God, I see a deficit between what you have promised and what you have declared and what my life is currently experiencing. Live in that place. Come on, I want, I want you to stand to your feet. I want to pray for some people. I want to pray for some people real quick. If you're, if you're being trying to conceive, now you've got to be married, okay? If you're married and trying to conceive, I want to pray an anointing. We have three flows on this house. There, there are three flows. The first one is the flow from barrenness to fruitfulness. That's the first miracle that happens on a regular. The second one is from poverty to prosperity. That's the second flow in this house. The third one is from terminal to completely healed. From terminal to completely healed. So the first one, if, if, if you're here and you're married and you're not able to conceive, or maybe you conceive, but you keep losing. You keep losing, you keep miscarrying. Breakthrough for you. We, we see this miracle almost every week. If that's you, would you just raise your hand? Would you just raise your hand? And we want to, amen. If you're around someone who's got their hand raised, would you just put your, your hand on, the, on their shoulders? Father, we release. I speak to wombs right now. And, and I prophesy the same word, the same word, the same word, the same word that Eli spoke over them. May the Lord grant your petition. May the Lord hear your request. Father, we release babies. I break curses of barrenness. I break the curse in the name of Jesus Christ. And I loose and release fruitfulness. I declare healing. I declare deliverance. I declare babies. I declare babies. And I hear, I can hear babies crying. I hear babies. I hear babies. I hear babies in the spirit. Ba there are babies literally in the spirit. And I just see there's almost like a, a, a cloud layer blocking them from coming in. And I see that layer right now being torn. When Jesus died on the cross, the veil was torn. I see like a veil being torn and babies being released. Babies being released. Not just one, not just one, not just one. Two babies, three babies. Father, I thank you, Lord God. Open wombs, open wombs, open wombs, open wombs, open wombs, open wombs, open wombs. Go ahead. Give the Lord a praise. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to pray for people this year. This year is your year to buy a home. This year is your year to buy a home. The world can say, hang on, look at, look at, you know, look at the interest rates and look at the Bidenomics and look at all of that. You don't need to, you don't, let, 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 let the world have all of the, that. You have God on your side. He opens doors no man can shut. He shuts doors. He owns the cattle on a thousand hills as well as the thousand hills where the cattle are grazing. Come on, if you're believing for a home this year, I want you to raise your hands to heaven. 
Father, I thank you right now for a home. I thank you for homes, for homes, for homes. Father, we release. We release the miraculous. We release the supernatural. We release the supernatural. We release the supernatural. We release it now. Release it now. We release it now. Release it now. We release it now. We release it now. Father, I thank you. Supernatural. 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 Listen, I want you to understand that the, 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 the whole Old Testament is about real estate. The greatest real estate loss happened when Adam was tricked by Satan in the Garden of Eden. And all that time, God has been saying, I'm going to take you into a land flowing with milk and honey. You're going to dispossess the giants. You're going to dispossess the Canaanites. The land is yours. To Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, I'm going to give this. It's all about land. It's all about territory. Father, I thank you right now for breakthrough. I thank you for a release. I thank you for a release. I hear the Holy Spirit saying, some of you are going to experience supernatural debt cancellation this year. Supernatural debt cancellation. You've been living, I, I, I just see there are people you're living literally smothered by, smothered by dead. I break it now in Jesus' name. I break the spirit of dead. I break it now. Others, I see cycles of poverty, cycles of poverty. I declare cycles of poverty are broken right now over these beautiful people, broken over these people. Father, I pray for each one that is a vision builder. Every person that's a vision builder, I want you to raise your hand. I want you to raise your hand. Every vision builder, every vision builder. I hear this. I hear the Lord saying that that but get ready with expectation. Look earnestly, look forward with expectation because breakthrough is going to overtake you this year. 2020 more is going to be a year of breakthrough and a year of harvest. 23 was a year of warfare. It was a year of warfare and travail. But 2024 will be a year of breakthrough and harvest. Those who sowed in tears, those who were faithful to fulfill pledges they made in 2023, 24 is going to be your harvest season. This is going to be your harvest year. Harvest year, I see raises, I see increases, I see new new jobs, I see new construct, I see new possessions. Father, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Now, the last one, the last one. If you need breakthrough physically, if you need breakthrough in your health, I want you to lift your hands. God is here. Beautiful lady, you're the first one with your hand up, up there. Here comes the power of God. I just feel the anointing. Just close your eyes, look to heaven. Here comes the power of God. Here comes, there it goes, right through you, right through you, right through you. There it is, right through you. I see the Holy Spirit. That's the anointing. That's the anointing. You'll feel that. You'll feel that beautiful heat going right through you. It's healing your lungs. Healing your lungs. There's been a condition there. Condition there. And, it's, and I'm telling you, I just, I see the Holy Spirit healing that, taking the pain. You've had tremendous pain, especially in the back and the lower back and in your legs. God healing that, healing that. There's been a, a, almost like a, a blockage in, in your spleen. I see God unlocking that, unblocking that. And, and this is what you're going to know. This is what you're going to know. This is you're going to know it's the Lord. It, it, it's, it's, you're going to be dropping weight, and the doctors are going to say, hey, you need to be eating like I am eating. Well, you need to maybe cut down your exercise, and I, I'm not really doing anything different. Well, how are you? It's, it's the Holy Ghost. It's God is, is healing because of some of the things that were blocked up. God is loosing it. God is loosing. 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 God is loosing that. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we terminate terminal. We terminate terminal. I speak to the spirit of infirmity in this house. I declare, I declare, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has anointed me to preach good news, to heal those who are oppressed by the enemy and I break that spirit of infirmity I declare people release every terminal illness we terminate you you are terminated get out of their lives get out of their bodies we speak to cancerous conditions and we say be reversed we speak to degenerative conditions and we say be reversed be reversed there's somebody here you're worried you're worried about your cognitive you're worried about dementia and I, I reverse it right now I reverse it right now I reverse it right now clarity comes back into your mind recall comes back memory, memory recall comes back in the mighty name of Jesus. There's somebody here and you have an arthritic condition. And right now you'll feel God's heat. You'll feel God's heat going through your body. Who is that person? Just give me a wave. I saw it. I saw it. That, that beautiful lady. Thank you. That's the power of God going right through you, right through you. And I saw it, especially in your legs, especially in your legs. God is healing the arthritis driving it out of your system. You're going to be able to walk. You're going to be able to run. You're going to be able to 
your life is not cut short. You're not going to be in a wheelchair. Healing flows your way in Jesus' mighty name. Come on, let's give God a great shout. Wow, what an amazing word. I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. Hey, listen, for more information about our church, go to www.awakenchurch.com or subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't already and download our app. It is amazing. It is chock full of incredible messages, information about upcoming events, and you can even support our ministry if you feel so inclined. We loved having you with us today. We look forward to seeing you again. God bless you. Live a life that is transformative. Bye for now.